Um, we're gonna go through a few housekeeping items first today. Um, be sure to type your email in the chat box to receive a training certificate. Use the chat box to ask questions and a reminder to put a question mark at the end of your questions. Turn your video and camera on if you can. We would love to see your faces. Um, mute your microphone during the presentation. The agenda for today, we have another panel of peers. Um, they're gonna talk about um, school start. Uh, they've started school and they're gonna talk about changes implemented for food service. We also have information you need to know, administrative reminders, food service considerations, farm to school reminders, and then of course, time for questions um, throughout and also at the end of the presentation. First off, I'm gonna start you guys off with some polling questions. <clears throat> we have three quick questions today and I'll share those results with you. So if you could just take a moment and answer the questions, I'm gonna pop them up on the screen here. Um, give me one second. You should see three questions. The first one, um, have you started school? Just a simple yes or no. Um, number two, was your school start delayed from the original start date? Yes or no. And then the third question, how confident are you feeling about food service in regards to mitigation that may be in place? Um, you're feeling confident somewhat or not confident. And we can't see your results. So we just wanna, we just wanted to pull everyone to kind of see where everyone was at. And I wanted to share that with the group. So I'll give you guys a few minutes here to finish voting. Looks like we have a couple more yet to answer. I'm not sure, Julie's iPhone, I'm not sure who that is. You keep coming unmuted. I keep muting I know. you, it's okay. <laughs> Looks like we still have a few answering yet. I'll give you a couple more seconds. Okay, can you guys see the poll results? Yes. Donna, can you see it? Okay. Um, so have you started school? It looks like a majority of you, 25% um, have started already. Um, there's another 75% um, yet to start. The second question was, um, has your school start been delayed? And it looks like most of you, um, are starting up at your normal time. The third question was, how confident are you feeling about food service in regards to mitigation that might be in place? And it looks like most of you are somewhat confident. Um, there's a, a few of you, 22% who are very confident and a few that aren't quite there yet. So I just wanted, that's great information for us. It kind of helps us understand where you're at and what you're going through. And um, I appreciate that, thank you. We'll get back to the PowerPoint. And Sean, are you ready to go? I am, <clears throat> I am. Gosh, I am feeling very good about that 73% that feel pretty confident. Um, that just shows that you guys have planned and replanned and you are prepared. So that is, is wonderful. So today we have something a, a little bit different um, than last week. We have a panel of peers, which is similar to last week, but we also have two managers that will be talking to us about what they're planning because school has not yet started. Um, a big welcome to Julie French from Arlington Public Schools. Um, they start tomorrow and 
Julie, um, your enrollment at your school when I looked at some last year numbers is 755. It's a, a pre-K through 12 school. And we also have Elaine Berta from Wilbur Claytonia Schools. She has two feeding sites. She has an elementary school and a junior senior high and kind of an interesting setup in that the kitchen's in the middle and then they serve from um, both sides. So they serve junior, senior high from one side and then the elementary from the other side of the kitchen. And Elaine, um, school starts 817 and your enrollment based on last year's um, information was 637. And we also have the privilege of having two food service directors that have already started serving meals. And a big welcome to Erna Blunt from Auburn Public Schools. They started 810 and that would have been Monday. So she's three days in and at Auburn, there's an elementary school and junior, senior, high. So two different feeding sites, enrollment almost 900. And then we have Jody Poskichill from Pawnee City Public Schools. Jody, you started early. You started eight, or I'm sorry, eight four, which was last week. And so you have lots of days under, um, under your belt to talk about. And um, Pawnee City is a little unique also in that the elementary school. Um, is separate from the, the high school, ju or junior high, high school. And then they have a central area where the kids come um, for the lunchroom and, and serving line. And so um, a big welcome to our panelists. So glad to have you with us today. And Julie, would you like to start out and just tell us, you know, what have you been planning? Hi guys. Um, we have been um, getting ready for this. It, I'm not going to say the stress level isn't high. It is a little high. But what we did here in the kitchen is um, the kids have come in the same way for years. Uh, the whole time I've been here 30 years. Now we have, we have flip-flopped that because in the past, the kids come in and go out and the computers are out at the end, uh, out of ways and the big salad bars are out there. So we have a kind of a little fence around it. So the kids have to stay in that area, come and check out at the two computers. Now with the COVID, uh, we have had to flip that around. So we're having um, the kids come in the middle door where they would normally go out where the milk cooler is, I'm going to have two paras there to put on milk, silverware, and napkin for elementary. It'll go to the main entree cook. Um, we will be putting all the food on. So our custodian, our maintenance man, is amazing. He has switched our food, food uh, lines. So the one from the one side has been moved to the other side so that, um, you know, we, we can make this run smoothly. And then our computers are inside. So we're all inside the kitchen behind a barricade. And there's six feet in between the serving line and um, the cooks. So that's, that's how we're planning to do that. We are going to have on our masks. The kids all have to have on masks. Um, the, it's, it's been a kind of an issue trying to find enough people to do that. And then uh, condiments has been another issue. Um, how we're going to do the condiments. I ordered big squeeze bottles. And so for elementary, the paras that are, are for the classes are gonna take the squeeze bottles 
and they're either going to be standing outside the door when the student comes out or they're going to be at their table and the paras are going to go around and uh, squeeze on ketchup or mustard with gloves and then those squirt bottles will come into us we will sanitize them and I, I ordered several so we have several sets of condiment bottles um, we will, the tables in the cafeteria are all, are all running in a different direction now. There will be three students on a table where you have the two tables together. So there'll only be six students at that table. So we can social distance the kids. And then there's dots all over the cafeteria where when the kids come in, they have to stay on the dot. Um, so I think it's going to slow down the serving a tad bit. Um, our salad, the first day our menu is chicken nuggets, corn. Um, We're going to do bug bites and then we are going to do salad and fruit. So we're going to do a canned fruit. We're going to do lettuce salad, carrots, cucumbers and tomatoes. So that cook will have to ask each student, you know, do you want, what would you like? And, and I'm hoping over time, you know, it'll, it'll just, it'll get better over time. They'll know they come in, they have to know what they want. Um, we are gonna have two marker boards out in the cafeteria when the students come in so that they can see what is on our menu and, and I'm sure when they get up there, they're gonna ask again because they just do. But at least some of them do look at it and say, you know, I know what I want and maybe that'll move it along a little bit. Um, we've got scanners this year. So the high school kids will have a card and they can put it on their phone, which is awesome. So we can scan the phone and the little kids, I, I made a notebook, I laminated all the, by home room, I laminated all the classes so we can go to kindergarten K and I can just scan them. Um, if anybody has a easier way to do it, I, I'm, you know, open for that. Our, our only, my only concern is I'm getting mixed messages on um, what to do in between lunches on these tables. Now I've got the quad tabs that I was planning to use. So after the first lunch came through, we go out there with our buckets, wipe the tables and the seats. It's ready for the next go around. Now I've had some mixed messages from the health department here at Washington County that Quat tabs are not on their list for um, it does not kill COVID. So, you know, but, you know, really to kill COVID, it has to be a disinfectant. So you would have to spray it and then um, wipe it down again. And we just don't have that time in between classes. In fact, I think we're going to be running it's gonna run into each other is my fear with this. So I'm, I'm really open for suggestions that way. You know, I thought about, we got this sanitizer from the health department or not from the health department, from the state. And I think all schools got it. It's in this red gallon jug, it's a hand sanitizer. Now that will, it's very watery, it'll go in a spray bottle, but I'm afraid, you know, it's for hand sanitizing. I don't think it's for, you know, to put on the table. I think you would have to wipe off. Um, so I'm open for suggestions <coughs> there, but that's, that's kind of, we are gonna have a choice of yogurt um, and cheese along with our main entree. And um, the yogurts, we've got K through second being in the gym, third and fourth are going to their classrooms. I'm gonna send a cart with the condiments on it. 
the pair there, when they get done, we'll put the trays on the cart and bring that back to us. So that's, that's kind of our plan. But as we go along, you just think of all these little things, you know, that you've got to um, think about. And so we're just, you know what, we're ready. And I'm excited to get these kids back and it's going to be a go. So, but I know Beth, I have kind of talked to you about the sanitizing and so I've got, I'm open on that end. Thank you so much, Julie. You have really thought about things. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> which is yes. great. Um, and thank you for sharing with the group yeah. because I'm sure you have helped them think about things maybe they haven't thought about. Right. And so we'll come back to the table, sanitizing the table issue in our um, in our chat box at the end of today's presentation. And so everyone be thinking of some ideas or what you're doing at your school to help um, Julie. Very now, good, thank Elaine, you. Yeah, help her out. Elaine, are you ready to tell us what's gonna happen at Wilbur Claytonia tomorrow? I, no, it's next week. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Um, we have been planning and planning just like everybody else has. Um, I have done uh, papers on the walls with um, head highlight, you know, with breakfast, just everything written down of all the scenario things that given all my girls a post-it note pad to write down their concerns or questions and everything. And I told them we're going to keep those post-it note pads and papers up and just keep writing things down as we're going through the process so we know what's working and what's not. Uh, we have talked in length today um, and stuff, and it's been, I, I kind of like Julie, we're kind of got things go, uh, rolling in, in a order here. Um, we had to reconfigure our lines too uh, to make them work, uh, and they're going to have plexiglass up on top of them. So we'll have no a shield between us and the kids. Um, I don't have plexiglass or anything on the bottoms of them because on the high school I think we're planning on asking them and serving them through the line you know as they're going so there'll be like a couple of us there the elementary we were thinking of just putting a, a plastic uh, uh, from a high density bag cover or something cutting it and putting it in front of the line and then that way at, when the kids all go through we can tear that off throw it away and the disinfecting maybe won't be as bad as otherwise because they won't be able to see everything. Uh, but the elementary will get served almost everything except at the very end we'll probably have a, maybe two uh, fruits, given them option of fruit or something and we'll ask them. And then the elementary side, the paras will uh, put on their condiments and everything like that and bottles and stuff. High school, the condiments, we're planning on putting everything in two ounce cups uh, and handing those out, I guess. Um, that's been a big issue because like pizza day, you know, they'll take like six ounces of ranch, some of the kids. So, you know, it's one of those things. I We're just gonna go with it. Um, the social distancing, I think our school, um, Thanks. I was visiting with Jody from Crete before, like a month before we visited. Their school, they kind of have the kids go in their uh, lunchroom, sit down, and then they dismiss the kids to the lunchroom, which I thought was great. And I brought it back to our administration, and I think they're going to go with that on the on the high school side. So we'll probably have a slower line coming in as we're going um, and stuff. So I thought that was kind of a neat idea. Um, milk breaks and uh, trays and carts getting back to the room. We're using paper trays on the high school and paper, for, you know, plastic forks. So that's not going to be a bad thing. But the elementary, they just can't handle that paper trays and stuff. So we're going to use regular trays. Um, that too, we're going to have carts sitting out there and have them put the trays out there and we'll go get them and stuff like that. I'm lucky enough, I guess, that my administration team, parents, teachers have all said that they would help disinfect the 
tables in between and stuff. So we don't have to worry about that in between lunches, but I'm kind of concerned about how well they'll do disinfecting, but I guess it'll work if I tell them what, what we got to use. Um, um, otherwise, you know, a lot of it just, I'm ready to get going. I think a lot of it is going back, you know, I'm, this is almost my 30th year too. I feel like I'm going back to the day I started where we put everything on the tray. So I keep telling myself, Elaine, you're just going backwards <laughs> again in time, but you know, we're going to make it work and everything. So I know we'll be fine. So. Thank you so much, um, Elaine. I agree. It does. It, it's been a very difficult time, um, but I think everyone is feeling the need that let's get something normal going. And so thank you very much. Now, Erna, you've been on the front lines now for a couple of days and Thank you for joining us. You look like you're put together after serving lunch. Um, and for all of you that have already started serving, thank you for taking the time um, to join us today and for everyone else too. But I know that preparing a meal, serving it, cleaning up, and then coming to a Zoom can be difficult. And so just thank you very much for joining us today. Erna, take it away. Okay. So yeah, so we've been serving for three days. And yes, it is, it's, it is going to take a lot of time. We are putting everything on the trays. We're in the yellow thread area in Nimha County. So the students and staff are required to wear masks. And we're fortunate though, the ESU provided everybody with five masks, all the students, all the staff with five masks each. So, but, so there is no social distancing at all. When they're coming through line they are just on top of each other like they always were uh yeah i know <laughs> we uh, we are putting everything on their trays and it's taking a lot of time you're right to think that julie it's going to take a lot of time it's slowing this way down so much that um by the time you get the first line served and they're out of there the next line's coming and there's no time to sanitize tables in between. Just, you know, a few tables, they're not setting out, maybe you get to a few. That's a concern for me, but I don't know how to do it. Uh, you know, the, the administration is the ones that decided where kids were gonna sit. They're, they are setting up tables like they always were. They're, okay, I was told they'd have like seven kids at a table, but the tables are full like three on one side at one end and four on the other side, the other end, the tables are full, like they always were. There's no social distancing whatsoever. And it is, everything's being put on the trays and it takes a lot of time. Really slowing us down. We have, we're offering one hot choice, one cold choice. And since we're not having salad bar, um, we were having a pre-made salad. So the last three days we've had a chef salad and they're really going better than I anticipated. Um, we're having, tomorrow we're serving tacos, so we're gonna offer a taco salad. And on Friday we're having chicken patties, so we're gonna offer a chicken salad. But they're going really, um, I thought we might have 10, 12, but they're, we're doing like 30, 35. So the kids are liking them and, and, and staff. So, but, but it's just, the big thing is, it's very time consuming to put everything on the trays. It goes much slower, but, and um, you know, I think the kids are, uh, especially the first day, you know, salad bar, they were very disappointed, but you know, we ha you have to do what you have to do to be safe. So, you know, that's just how it is. And there, that's with everything. So I think the big issue is how long it takes to do everything. Cleanups going really smooth and I had a, replaced two staff members this, this summer, because I lost two. So oh, I have two new people, but everything's running really smoothly. It's a little stressful. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a little stressful, Plus, so, but we're, we're making it, you know. And, you know, I really anticipate uh, as time goes, the kids will be more used to it and we'll be more used to it. And it'll may hopefully speed up just a little, but, 
I think the big issue is there is no social distancing going on in our lunchroom. Uh, well, we're not going to go there, Erna, because that would be an administration um, yeah. decision. So I know. Um, I can't. <laughs> I will be honest, I did take a picture of it this afternoon because I thought and if someone comes uh, comes blaming me, I'm going to, I guess, you know, here's the picture I had nothing to do with. <laughs> I well, with. I am so glad that the salads are going um, so well. It's the perfect time for a salad. Yeah. Um, and kids like salads. Oh, uh, yes. Our and salad so is important. I hated losing it, but... Uh, great job. Um, Jody, I'm just going to turn it right over to you, okay? <laughs> are you Are you thinking I'm going to talk a lot? No, nope, not at all. I know you're going to give us great information. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, we've been serving since the 4th of August. Um, we actually revamped our line um, from the window and moved it out into the cafeteria, and we turned our fruit and veggie bars into our serving line. So our first fruit and veggie bar, we still offer two fruits and we brought our veggies down to offering two veggies. So we offer two fruits, two veggies, so they can choose. Um, on the salad bars, what we did, and then the second salad bar we turned into a hot well. And then after the hot well is the point of sale. So on the first fruit and veggie bar, we have a choice of fruit, choice of veggie, and then we have two cold options. We always have a salad or a sandwich or a wrap. Um, and so then after they choose that, they can go to the hot, hot item. And I'm actually thinking about bringing in another hot item, <laughs> but I haven't got there yet. Um, but it's going really well, actually. And then I use regular trays. I don't, I don't use foam. And I purchased a wrap. It's actually a dental sterilization wrap. And it goes over my trays. And then we seal them. And then they go out the door. So they come in the double doors. This is for elementary only. They come in the double doors. They come through the line. We have we have the same thing. We have uh, six feet distancing steps across on the floor for them to follow. Um, and then they come through the line. They go to point of sale and they exit out a different door. So they're all running the same direction. And they take those meals back to the classroom. Um, I did go to Sporks with the napkin and the straw and the silverware in, in there instead of the real silverware. I don't use that anymore. Um, and then the high school, all the um, cafeteria tables have been taken out and we brought in actual tables. So it'd be like the tables that they use for um, athletic banquets. And we brought tables in and we put chairs at them and they're all facing the same direction. So nobody is able to turn around or face each other. And the only time the masks come up is when they're eating. Um, another thing I would like to add is on our fruit and veggie bars that we turned into the serving line, we actually took the back shield off where we're at so that we could reach the products. And on the front, we left the sneeze guard. And I went to the dollar store and I purchased clear shower curtains and I cut them in half and I taped them with packaging tape to the front of my fruit and veggie bars so that the kids could still see the items, but yet they were protected. Um, at our school, we're required to wear PPE shields and a mask. So um, we're pretty protected there. And um, the high school does eat in the cafeteria. We've adjusted it so I have two high school lunch periods, but they never overlap with an elementary. And um, let's see what else. We set up dumping stations in the elementaries in between serving times. My staff does go get those carts and bring them back over to be washed. We did close off our window. So the high school is not able to come to the window to dump their trays because my dishwashers are over 62. Um, so we have dumping stations in the high school. Now for breakfast, I wanna jump back to breakfast. Um, we do a grab and go breakfast in the elementary as they come in the building. I offer two options. One of those every day is a cereal. And then for high school, I add go over at nine o'clock and I offer a grab and go breakfast for them. 
but I also go back at 922 and I offer a grab and go breakfast again for two classes that do not pass at nine o'clock. And again, with them, I offer two options and one of them is always a cereal. Did I miss anything? No, I think you did a great job. Thank you so <laughs> much. Um, I am just amazed at how these food service directors have, have planned and how they have thought out how to make this work. So congratulations, um, you've done a great job and I'm sure that our participants are gonna have questions for you. Um, if you have questions, we um, now would be a good time actually to ask your question if you'd like to unmute or if there are questions in the chat, Beth, um, would you tell us and and we can get some answers? And yeah, somebody asked if people are using real silverware or just the packets. And it sounds like we have kind of mixed results that some are, some aren't. Some are using disposable trays, some are using their regular lunch trays. So it, it sounds like we have a mix of, of what people are doing. Um, for those of you that are using your regular silverware and trays, why did you make that decision? Would, would I have a volunteer just speak up and, and tell us? I did it for, because of the budget. I did it to stay within my budget and to purchase those all year long, they would be horrible. That'd be very expensive. So um, I had to find a way to keep my trays, which I did. Um, and yet I had to find a way to also make it easier for us to have a dumping station. And that's why I went with the sporks. So. Okay, great. Thank you, Jody. Now, Elaine, did you mention that um, you were using regular trays for elementary? Yeah, I decided to go with regular trays for elementary, but I only, I'm only i only going to do the paper trays with the high school till we get going. I want to make sure us girls aren't overwhelmed here in the kitchen. So we, I thought, I thought I'd go slow by doing half paper and half real trays for us. And we decided to go plastic, you know, forks and spoons too, because if the kids are throwing away papers and stuff, we were, we were thinking we lose enough silverware the way it is. So I, and I'm sure we'll bring back real silverware in time, but it's just going to take some time. And like I said, it's more or less, I think for me to just make sure we're comfortable with the serving part of it and making sure we have time to do it because our girls in the kitchen are going to have to come out in the dish room and help us out in the serving area. So, you know, I'm hoping to get back to our regular <clears throat> stuff. Good. Thank you. Now, Erna, I know you mentioned that your kids were disappointed about the self-serve fruit and vegetable bars, but no one has self-serve fruit and vegetable bars wherever you go. Those are all closed. So um, it's not like it's something different at your school. It's everywhere. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. What else do we have in the chat box, Beth? We have um, Ken. We cover table with plastic uh, table covers layered for our three runs instead of washing and sanitizing. Um, this hasn't come up, so I will check on that with Mandy at the health department. Do we have anything else that we can address? Don, I, I had the question about the sanitizer. What right. other schools are using? What are other schools utilizing to clean their tables? Our janitors are spraying our tables and then wiping them down for us. So with the quad. So that's how we're doing our tables. Erna, what are you doing down in Auburn? Uh, uh, bleach water is what we've been doing. When we get to them, bleach water. But I do have sanitizer. I, mean, I just haven't 
I mean, it was supposed to be, you know, I haven't, we haven't even got to it because um, I'm thinking I'm going to have to clean the tables after I apply the sanitizers. So, I mean, it's not hand sanitizers, you know, it's sanitizers. And we're, we are so, we're so busy as it is right now, trying to catch a breath. I don't know. Okay. Don, my understanding is that you cannot put the bleach on the tables, bleach water. Can they eat on a surface that has been wiped with bleach? Yeah, they can, as long as it's at the proper strength. Perfect. You know, if as long as it's not too um, strong, it's, you know, use your sanitizer strip to test it, but as long as it's not too strong, you can use it. <clears throat> Julie, that might be good news. Yes, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else want to chime in about what they're using to clean their tables or how they're doing it? Um, at Boone Central, we are using our regular sanitizer. It's pre-mixed with water. Um, we're doing that in between each group. At the end of the day, we're using a Clorox solution which is one third cup Clorox to a gallon of water, which is at disinfectant strength. Kathy, thank you so much for sharing that recipe. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I saw people writing it down. Um, anything else, Beth? Um, <clears throat> somebody made a statement that they had bought a fogger that dries in minutes to sanitize the between the shifts after you wipe them down. Make sure that that is a sanitizer and not a disinfectant. We don't want to make anybody sick from a disinfectant. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions um, that they would like to ask our participants, our panel? Um, unmute your mic, please. And if there's a question you have that you would like to ask, now would be a good chance for our panelists to answer. I have a question. I remember Mandy talking about, um, don't we have to wash the tables first with like a soap and water and then sanitize them? Is it a two-step process? Mary Jo, say that again. I remember Mandy talking about it being a two-step process, washing the tables. Do we have to wash them with soap and water first as step one and then sanitize those tables as step two? Um, you can use your normal sanitizing between the periods. That's fine. Perfect. It's just if you are using disinfectant, that's when you absolutely have to go back and wipe it off after it has been on there for the set amount of time and then go back through with water rinse. Not, you know, take a towel that's been in water and rinse it off. Thank you. Uh-huh. Jeff, I do not know what we'd do without you to address all these food safety questions that have come up due to COVID. So a big thank you to Beth on our staff for um, stepping up and, and keeping abreast of what needs to happen. So I think we'll go ahead and move on. Okay, it's time to send, send you to a breakout room. Um, we're gonna send you to breakout Uh oh. Sean, you muted. Oh, sorry. You know, technology has not been my friend for a long time. Um, we're going to send you out to a breakout room, and you're going to be with um, other food service directors, other staff. Um, other folks that have an interest in um, school food service and we're going to send you for 10 minutes and you're going to chat amongst yourself about your concerns and your triumphs 
um, just whatever you'd like to. We're not going to come back and share. Um, if you have questions that you can't resolve um, amongst yourselves, please enter those in the chat box and we'll get to those at, um, at the end of the Zoom today. So, Allie, would you like to send them away for 10 minutes? I will. Give me a few seconds here and see everyone in 10 minutes. Hello, ladies. Anybody there? Yes. I am. I have to do auto some of you, so just give me a moment here. I promise I'll fit you in a room. <laughs> Yay! I'm Donna from St. Paul Public, Public School. Um, getting ready to start on uh, next week, Wednesday. And you are? Judy Coleman from Wayne Public School. Judy and we well. start tomorrow. Oh my goodness. Good luck, Judy. <laughs> I'm here, here all now.
Well, um, I'm checking to make sure that everyone is back, but not everyone is. So we'll just wait a few minutes. I hope you all had a good chat in your break rooms. Um, once again, if you didn't get your questions answered um, in the breakout, please enter them into the chat box. Put a question mark behind your question. And I believe we're all back now. And remember last week how we polled you and asked you um, what day would you like um, serving up great school meals to be, and how often would you like to meet? And so we're sharing with you today the results of that poll. 64%, which was the vast majority, um, had stated that they would prefer to meet on Wednesdays. And 67% said every other week. So with that in mind, we will be going to a, a two-week schedule every two weeks, and we will be meeting on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock, which brings me to the next slide. That I know some of you are thinking, well, darn, that doesn't work for me. I have plans on Wednesdays, every other Wednesday. Um, and I just wanted to remind you that these Zooms are recorded and they are available to you at any time. Um, they are located on the Nutrition Services main page at the bottom of the page. And you can view them whenever you would like. And also, um, we also have the resource pages that we have developed for you um, that are associated with the Zooms. So when we were talking about when Mandy um, had um, came to the Zoom and she talked about um, food safety, food safety, and there is the question and answers from that Zoom available. So um, wanted to make sure that we were meeting everyone's needs um, with serving up great school meals. So just know that if you can't ever make one, you can view it later. So let's move on to the next slide. So with that said, serving up great school meals will be August 26th at two o'clock. So please mark your calendars. That's two weeks from today. And by that time, most of you will have started serving meals um, at your school. So we will plan for a lively discussion on um, that date. And tomorrow, tomorrow you need to tune in because we're going to have an introduction to HACCP part two. Um, Beth from our office will be presenting and this is part two of the introduction that she provided um, two weeks ago. And it's just the basics on hazardous analysis, critical control points, HACCP, which is USDA's required food safety plan um, for schools and institutions that participate in the school meals program. Produce University or Produce Safety, the summer series. Um, the third webinar is August 18th, which is next Tuesday. Um, you need to sign up. Each one of those um, individual webinars um, require registration, and the upcoming one will be discussing good agricultural and good manufacturing handling practices for fresh and um, fresh cut produce. So tune into that, and all of those are also recorded and available. Um, at the Institute for Child Nutrition if you've missed any. And we did miss something. We missed something on Monday and uh, we failed to let you know about this because we didn't know about it till after the fact. Um, USDA, the Office of Food Safety um, COVID-19 webinar series. And I have not watched it um, yet, but it is recorded and 
the title of it was Lessons Learned the New Normal. And what they discussed in that webinar were types of um, school meal service options planned for the fall of 2020, food safety best practices for holding, transporting, and serving food, lessons learned by school nutrition operators that fed meals during the unanticipated school closure in March, and back to school strategy. So this seems like a very, very good webinar, and I'm, I'm very thankful, happy that it's recorded. So if that's something you want to check out, um, it's at the Institute for Child Nutrition. So let's move on to administrative reminders. The deadline for completing the school meals application is this coming Friday, um, August 15th. And that application does need to be completed. That is the deadline that we have set. Um, at the same time that the application is being completed, it's the ideal time to enter in the food safety inspections that were received in school year 1920 because it's already happened. Um, and the deadline for that technically is October 15th, um, but now is a good time to get those entered in. And it's by feeding site and you enter in zero, one, or two. And it's fine if you didn't have any, it's fine if you had one or two. It's just something that we have to collect and report to USDA. And I know with the unanticipated school closure that happened in March, you very well could have zero or one. Wanted to uh, mention that we are still waiting on USDA to release the funds um, to award the grants for the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program for school year um, 2021. Those have not been released yet. So we are just on hold until those um, are received to Nebraska. Next slide. Direct certification list. Private schools, make sure you have uploaded your enrollment. School starting and you have your enrollment. Make sure that you have it uploaded so we can match with all of the current students. For public schools, I remind you that advisor opened August 1st and households need to be um, notified of student eligibility. Um, the School Food Authority household approval denial letter must contain the same information as the one from Nutrition Services, and that can be found under the Nutrition Services website forms and resources. So if you're using a letter generated by your software system or have developed your own letter, please make sure it contains all of the same information as the one that our office releases. Um, approve income eligibility applications. That should be on every bookkeeper's radar right now is the families are submitting their eligibility applications. Just a reminder that the determining official signs and dates those income eligibility applications um, once they are approved. Um, so make sure that is happening. And then wanted to mention again that the 30 school day carryover from the previous school year ends when a new determination of eligibility has been made. Um, so just a reminder about the 30 school day carryover and when that determination of eligibility is made and it's when the determination is made with the new information. So next slide. And notify nutrition services if you have a new food service manager, claim contact or authorized representative. Um, that information is marked in the application packet and we do have training available um, on the nutrition services website and um, we will have some additional training um, posted very soon for the bookkeeper training and um, for our food service managers. So next slide. And I'm turning it over to Donna from our office. She will be talking about food service considerations. Hello, everyone. And did you notice how Sean kept talking faster and faster when she got to the end of her slide presentation so she could hand it off to me? 
<laughs> you have to excuse me, my throat's a little scratchy. I'm sucking on a cough drop. I hope I won't be too gross with that. But there are a few food service considerations we need to talk about today. And this first one I feel requires a little bit of an explanation. Um, for those students who are involved in remote learning or alternating scheduling, based on the USDA's response waivers, COVID response waivers, and we're talking here about non-congregate feeding waiver, mealtime flexibility, and parent pickup, school meals may be provided to students who do not attend school in person. The accountability for these meals is at the point of service. So I want to stop there and talk about this for a minute because, excuse me, I have to get rid of my cough drop. Alrighty. Okay, so there are various reasons why a student may not attend school in person and every school is different in the way that you handle this and your scheduling is handled. So it's difficult to say it's a black and white issue. The main point to remember here is that the accountability for these meals is at the point of service. Okay, so let's look at a normal year. A student is in school, she goes through the line, she gets her meal, she goes through the POS, she's doing fine. If she's sick the next day, she doesn't come to school. So of course she doesn't get a meal or go through the POS. Black and white, you know, a meal is claimed the day she's there, a meal is not claimed when she isn't there. And that's what happens during a normal year. But guess what? This is not a normal year. What if the student, let's use, talk about an example here. What if the student is participating in remote learning on an alternating schedule? And on the day that she's in school, she picks up a meal in the line for her day the next day when she's going to be remote learning at home. This meal will go through the POS, she'll take it home. And then unfortunately she falls ill the next day and does not participate in her remote learning. So can this meal be claimed? Well, again, it goes back to the POS. If the meal is counted at the POS, it is allowable. The school does not have to track whether this student logged into remote learning to make sure that she was learning so that can be counted at a, as a reimbursable meal. That would take this is, it would be crazy, wouldn't it, to keep track of all of these different situations and all of these meals. So at the regional office, they have told us that the school does not have to track whether the student logged in to ensure the meal can be claimed. In good faith, the food service worker gave her that meal the day before and the accountability stops at the POS. So basically the if the meal is counted at the POS, it's allowable and you don't have to worry about if the child is sick or if the child comes down with COVID. And maybe, you know, we hear that some people who have COVID don't have any symptoms. Maybe they can still remote learn, maybe some can't. So all kinds of situations. And I think I've talked enough about that now, so I will. <laughs> but if you have any questions about that, let us know. Okay, the second thing here on this slide. Oh, and by the way, Meals are claimed by the student's eligibility. Remember, it's no longer free meals for everyone that we're, uh, we are claimed by paid, reduced, or free. Okay, so the second point on this slide is parent pickup. And it is allowed with the waiver of parent pickup that is listed in the previous paragraph there. Um, it's allowable for a parent or a guardian to sign a consent form for someone else to pick up the meals for the students. So you should have that consent form. They should be able to sign it. You keep it on file. And in the smaller schools, it's really not an issue with knowing people. And so you can recognize people when they come to pick meals up. But it's good to have that documentation on file. All righty. Oh boy, Elaine, you had to ask a question. <laughs> well, we'll get to the questions in, in a little bit. Um, the third point here is offer versus serve in the classroom. If some of you are planning 
to do this and on uh, practice alpha versus serve, just remember all food components and the required portion sizes must be offered. There must be signage or methods, some kind of system to inform students what choices are available so that they know what's going on. They must understand the meal pattern. And also teachers and staff must be well trained in offer versus serve requirements. We have training materials on our website for offer versus serve in several different places. So if you need to know about availability of training materials, let us know. Then last of all, you again, just a reminder that you're now serving on the school meals program based on eligibility, paid, free, or reduced. Doesn't matter what type of learning situation you're in, if it's in-person learning, alternating scheduling, and or remote learning. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so a couple of things to mention here, and I know Beth had put something about this one in the chat box. There was a question asked about if Mandy can come back, and I know Mandy has a super duper schedule, busy, busy with everything she's trying to do. So um, her department, we mentioned this last year, the Department of Environment and Energy, which is where Mandy is housed, had, they have put together a COVID-19 frequently asked questions for food service professionals. And it has some great information on it. We're really anxious to get this out to you folks, but it has not been approved at the highest level yet. So as soon as it is, from what I understand, Beth, um, they're going to let us send it out to all the food service directors, correct? Yeah, she's, she's nodding her head, okay. So that will be something to look forward to coming down the road because it has some really, really great salad bar information on it. Okay, next slide, Allie, please. You're really good at changing these slides, boy. Thank you. Okay, so I know every time you hear my voice, you think, there she goes again, Launch Nebraska. Well, this is an important point to bring up this time. I wanted to show you this slide and then I'm gonna ask Allie if she can give up control of her screen and I will share my screen. And let's go to this one, okay. So we have the Launch Nebraska website right and this should look familiar to everyone we at least look at it every week and we've been talking about going up here to conditions for learning and then that will take us to the list of supporting considerations that we have down here and the fourth one down is the nutrition services supporting considerations i could click on this it brings it up in a word file eight pages in length, I believe, but um, you may have already looked at this. It's a series of questions that you should consider about your food service operation. I don't think it's just when you first get started this fall, but you may want to go back to this document and refer to it later. And now let's go back to the Launch Nebraska Home because I want to show you where some other information is located and if you scroll down on the home page there are documents that a lot of them if you see this they have guidance in the title and guidance means that okay we have some stronger uh, guidance here for reopening it's not just supporting con uh, continue con um, considerations excuse me but uh, actual guidance and Basically, if we click on this link, planning a safe return to school, it will bring up this document that is aligned with the four different risk levels that we hear about so much on the dial, or maybe there's another configuration that your health department, department uses. But Beth and Allie, did a lot of work and I did a very small amount on this one. So it, it's an awesome document though. Um, even though I didn't work on it right though, it makes, sound, makes it sound like I'm plugging something for myself. But Allie and, and Beth um, did a lot of good work in putting together a guidance document based on these four different levels. And it, it's color coded. It hasn't been loaded yet because they just finished with it, I believe on Monday. And so it will, 
talk about what should be done with food service issues under the green, the minimal spread, I believe the yellow and the orange may be together or Ali, are those separated for food service? They're separated. Yeah. They're separated, yeah. I thought yeah. maybe on this document they're, they're put together, but in the document that Beth and Ali put together, it's green, yellow, orange, and red. And what do you do in these different situations? So it's stronger guidance than you will find in the considerations document. So some new things to look at. Okay, Ali, I'm gonna quit sharing my screen and let you take over so we can look at the crunch slide and then we'll go back to me. Um, Sarah Smith couldn't be with us today and uh, most of you know that she is our local food consultant who works with the Farm to School program and does a wonderful job with all of this. And I believe she talked about this slide last week, but we know that there's a crunch off coming um, October 22nd and we know that Nebraska is the crunch off champion from last year. No pressure, but we would like that to happen again. So this is the slide that gives us the information. Um, this postcard was going to be sent out, but I believe now it's going to be a virtual postcard um, that was designed with information on it about the Nebraska Crunch Off. And Allie, if you don't mind uh, letting me show my screen again, we'll go to the Crunch Off website. Whoops, wherever it is. Share screen. Oh, there we go. Okay, so when you click on the link, and I believe Beth is going to put the links in the chat box, or if she hasn't already, I don't have my chat box up so I can't see it. But basically, um, the, it'll take you to the Mountain Plains Crunch page. And then what you will do to register, the registration is already open. We encourage schools to go ahead and register. We know your plates are very full, but if you register for this now, then you won't forget later. So that will be awesome. And if you click on register here, it will take you to this survey monkey page. That is a very brief survey for you to tell them about um, your crunching plans. You know, it doesn't have to be apples. It could be anything crunchy, carrots, turnips, radishes. I don't know, whatever you can come up with at this time of year that is Nebraska grown. And um, so that's what we want to promote is the crunch off. And again, Nebraska champion, if we can't have football, we can have a crunch off. There you go. So I will quit sharing my screen again. And there you go. Thank you for listening. Donna, we have some questions for you. Oh boy. The rest of our staff. Uh, will remote learning do uh, we need to feed everyone who wants a lunch or just the free and reduced students? Okay, Sean, I'll let you take that one. <laughs> um, as we wait for further guidance um, from our national office, USDA national office, our regional office did, um, did provide some information and maybe a little guidance in that. You know, it's um, an equity and access issue that we want to treat all students fairly and equally. And um, so I guess the answer to that question is, yes, we would treat all students the same and would be offering those students the opportunity for meal service. Now, would every household take you up on meals? Probably not, because they need to be informed that they will be paying for those meals. Um, the student meal price, um, paid, reduced, and of course free, and, and you will be claiming them the same way, paid, free, and reduced. So would every household take you up on that? Probably not, um, but offering them um, the opportunity is what needs to happen, yes. 
Okay, next question is, do we have to deliver or would they pick up? Um, we have the parent pickup waiver, which um, that, you know, USDA, as Donna mentioned, we have waivers. We have parent pickup waiver, we have mealtime flexibility waiver, and we have non-congregate meal waiver. And you would not have to deliver parent pickup. You would just need to communicate that to your household, okay, of how you would be um, providing those meals, and that might be another reason where households may choose to participate or not participate. Um, but there is no obligation to deliver those meals. Very good. Okay, so is the meal counted for the day it is handed out or the day it's on the menu to be eaten? It's the meal count for the day that it is intended. Okay, it's the meal count for the day that it is intended for. That's good. Okay, do we have to hand out meals during lunch meals or <clears throat> to go home for the remote students or can it be at a later in the day? Remember we have the mealtime flexibility, <coughs> okay, and parent pickup so you can determine that time for pickup. It would not have to be during the same time as regular meal service. Um, and the meal that you would be providing could be a grab and go. You know, it, it doesn't have to duplicate what's being offered that day, but you do have to meet meal pattern requirements. And that includes the portion size, and all of the vegetable subgroups, all of the requirements of the meal that is served as full would have to be met for the grab and goes. Okay. Does the waiver allowing the summer feeding program approach extend into the 2020-21 school year? No, it does not. That waiver um, expires August 31st, but once school started, you are in session and can no longer participate in the summer food service program because school is in session and meals are have to be provided under the school meals program. There is no waiver extension um, for the summer food service program. Okay. Do we need to apply for each of these waivers or are the, all schools covered under the state's waiver? Gosh, just another great question. Um, from what I'm going to ask my teammates to chime into, these are nationwide waivers, which means that our state doesn't have to apply for the waivers. But we do need to um, survey our SFAs, um, our schools, institutions, to see if they are utilizing each one of those waivers. And that survey is under development and will be sent, but not all schools have started. And so there really isn't the urgency to survey you at your busiest time right now. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so do the meals have to be noted on the production sheet for the day it was picked up or the day that they would be served? You would need to keep a production record for the day it's intended. Um, so I, I'm saying that when, uh, chime in co co-workers, help me on this one. Well, what about uh, just keeping a separate production record for those meals that go out for remote learners that day? And that way you'll know that those meals are f intended for the next day, but you get sent, but they would, and I would assume they would all be the same or for the most part the same. And that would be a separate production record from your usual hotline production record that you made for that day. Does that sound like it makes sense? The meal I would want the production. 
Oh, go ahead, Marianne. I'm sorry. I would want the production record dated for the day, as you have said, for the day that meal is intended to be consumed. Yeah. yeah. Like if they pick up meals on Monday for Tuesday, then that production record should have Tuesday's date on it. But we're counting it on Monday. You're not, no, you're not counting it. You're, because it's intended for Tuesday, you are counting it for Tuesday because that's the day yeah. that it's intended for. But we noted on Monday's lunch count, right? Is no. That what you said earlier? No, mm -hmm. it's no, it's tracked the day it is intended. Okay. But maybe maybe the confusion there is it would have ran through the POS the day before. That might be a little bit where you're getting confused. It yeah. would not. It, it needs to be counted on the day it's intended yeah. for. So that it's not going to run through the POS because your POS needs to be, the meals intended for Tuesday, it needs to go through Tuesday POS count. Yeah, there might have been confusion earlier when we were talking about that, just the way it was said. So, yep, thanks for clarifying. Yep. So, in other words, you could use a roster to mark meals and then put it in the POS for the next day later. Is that what, would that, because, would that work Elaine to do it that way to keep a, a roster of meals that? Yeah, because I understood it like the way Ali said is that you said when they pick it up. So if they pick it up Monday, you were supposed to put it in the POS. Yeah. Um, it's kind of what I understood the first time. So yeah. that, I just want to make sure I've clarified and I'm sure somebody else maybe might be thinking the same thing. So the day it was intended for is the day it actually gets bit. We count it. Yeah, that's a good point. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, thank you, Elaine, because I totally get what you're saying now that you've explained it. Your responsibility with that meal ends at the point of service. Um, it, it's how we intended that to, to be said is that we didn't care if the child was sick the next day. Um, once that point of service is taken, then your responsibility is over, but that meal really is for the next day. It, you know, the intention is that's the meal for the next day. Keep asking your questions. Um, <laughs> we can certainly try. If any of that is confusing, we can certainly um, have another team member try and explain it. What else is in that chat box? Um. Um, okay, so Travis wants to clarify on the waiver because he was interrupted. Does the waiver allowing summer food feeding program approach extend into the school year 2021? Sorry, nope. That waiver, um, you are, um, you are in school. You are in session. Um, it doesn't matter the way learning is being provided. Um, if it's in person, if it's uh, uh, an alternate schedule, or if it's remote learning, school is in session, and meals have to be claimed under the school meals program. There's nothing else. Okay. Anyone have additional questions that they would like to ask? If not, um, we will end this Zoom and a big thank you to everyone for participating with us today. Um, we look forward to hearing um, how school has went or has been going.